Well, good morning. Welcome to Midday Moments. Uh, today is Sharing Saturday, and I'm Pastor Mark. It's so good to be here with you today and to come into your living rooms or your phone or wherever you are today. Um, just happy to be able to share with you today. Um, it's a beautiful day out today. I don't know if you've had a chance to look outside, um, but the sun is shining. It's, it's gorgeous out there. Of course, we're not allowed to go anywhere, but maybe you can enjoy it from your back deck or maybe go for a walk if there's not too many people out there. I'm just so glad that um, you can join us today. Glad that God has blessed us with another beautiful day and looking forward to what God has laid on my heart to share with you today. Um, I want to talk to you about camping today. Well, a little bit about camping. And most of you, if you know me, you know that I love to camp. Um, you know that I, if you don't know that about me, well, you do now. Um, I am an avid camper. I love whether it's um, a canoe trip or car camping with my family, with our little tent trailer that we have. I just love to live outdoors. And I know some of you are going, oh, camping, I hate camping. Others of you are like, hey, right on. I'm with you, Mark. I like to camp too. Um, but one of the things about camping is that you have to have the right equipment. It's kind of essential, I think, um, because without the right equipment, sometimes, in fact, often you might run into uh, uh, something in your camping trip that kind of gets ruined and ruins it for you. And you have a terrible time because you just didn't have what you needed. Um, one of the essential pieces of equipment when you're camping is a good flashlight. Um, because when you're camping and the sun goes down, it gets dark. Now, unless you've got a nice big full moon out there, which is beautiful and amazing, um, but usually when I camp, it's cloudy and raining, um, but not always. Uh, but often there's not a lot of light out there. In fact, I've been camping at times when you can't even see your hand in front of your face. It's so dark and it just gets so dark because we're away from the city lights and we're away from everything. Um, so you need to have a good flashlight. I have several different flashlights um, that I use for different purposes and different types of trips. For example, uh, I'll show them to you here. So this is my this is my canoeing flashlight. Um, it's my canoeing flashlight because it's really small. It's light. It's made out of aluminum and uh, it doesn't take up a lot of space in my pack because I don't like to carry too much when I'm portaging. And uh, and it's light. So it's not too heavy um, and it's very bright. It's got a nice bright beam on it. Now, one of the challenges with this light though, is it only shines where you shine it. So if I'm walking on a trail in the dark and I hear a noise over to my left and, I, and I'm like, was that a bear? The only way I can tell is if I point the flashlight over there and now I can see, but now I can't see in front of me anymore, right? Flashlight only shows where it's pointing. So sometimes this flashlight is not great, although it's great for canoe trips. Sometimes you need a light more like this. It's a lantern, right? And you can see, you know, it because it's a lantern, the light shines all the way around me, right? It creates like a circle of light. Uh, I'll turn that off. Since I'm not sure how that's working with the video, but a lantern like this is very helpful because it kind of lights all the way around and I can see in all different directions. So if I'm cooking or preparing food, no good for canoe trips because it's too big, um, but very nice to light up at the inside of a tent or or around side around by the campfire or something. Of course, my favorite flashlight is this one. This is my big flashlight. Um, I like this one because it's really bright. It can shine probably about maybe maybe thirty or forty meters. It, it's it's got a really strong beam on it. You can narrow the focus and get a really tight beam. Uh, that goes a long way, or you can turn it and get a flood on it, and it kind of it just lights up everything. But it has its limitations, of course, as well. Of course, it only shines in one direction, like my small light, and it um, it's heavy and big. There's no way I'm taking this on a canoe trip. Um, I mean, it weighs more than my paddle, I think. Uh, but it's a great flashlight for car camping. In fact, I keep it in my car all the time in case I'm ever have to stop and see what's wrong with something or, or whatever. It's just a great light and it's really, really bright. All these lights are helpful and they all provide the light that I need when I'm on a camping trip um, under different circumstances. But every one of them 
has certain limitations, right, that I already talked about, size, weight, power, etc. But they all share one limitation. One, one limitation they all have in common is that none of them light up everything as though it was daylight. Right? You understand what I'm saying? In, in daylight, I can see I, I can see as far as I can see, right? The, there's no darkness. But at night, even with a flashlight, the light only goes so far and only lets me see so much. A flashlight and a dark light only gives a certain amount of light, and beyond that light is still darkness. But I've always been able to see what I needed at the time. It's the same way with God. You didn't think this was going to be all just about camping, did you? No, of course we're going to talk about God. The Throughout the Bible, throughout God's Word, all the way through, He promises to to guide and to show us the way, right? Those promises um, are, are throughout the Bible. For example, Proverbs 20, verse 24 says, a man's steps are directed by the Lord. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, very famous verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Psalm 48, 14 says, For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide to the end. And then Psalm 119, verse 105, another famous verse. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And it's not just in the Old Testament. I know those were all Old Testament references. The New Testament is full of instruction from Jesus and direction for how we should live and what we should do. In fact, Jesus when he, was, when he left the earth, after his resurrection, he sent, God sent the Holy Spirit to live in the believer. Why? To teach us all things and remind us of everything Jesus taught. That's in John 14, verse 26. So God promises and he does lead us and guide us and show us the way through life, show us how to live, show us how to, to act and what we should do. But God doesn't show us everything, just like my flashlight. We, we just get what we need to see at the time. I mean, we probably couldn't handle being able to see everything anyways. If God showed us the whole plan, we'd be like, whoa, I can't handle that. But God shows us what we need to see. Now, not necessarily everything we want to see. There's a difference between what we need to see and what we want to see. But God shows us what we need, always. For example, remember when the Israelites were getting out of Egypt, um, heading to the Promised Land, leaving slavery and, and, and becoming a, a, a nation? God led them. Remember the story? God led them through the wilderness with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Now, that's pretty cool, but, I mean, wouldn't it have been easier just to give Moses a map? You know, here, here's where you are, here's where I'm going to take you to, and here's how you're going to get here, here's where you're going to stop on the way, here's the route you're going to take, um, here's all your rest stops, here's where there's water, here's... No, he didn't do that. God just gave them what they needed at the time. In fact, he didn't even tell them how long they were going to be on this journey. But they had what they needed. They had the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, and they just had to follow it whenever it moved ahead of them by faith, not necessarily knowing where they were going to end up or how long it was going to take or what route they were going to take, but they followed God through the wilderness, and he gave them everything they needed. God doesn't always tell us everything we need to know, or everything, I'm sorry, he tells us everything we need to know. He doesn't tell us everything we want to know. Remember when Peter asked about what would happen to John in John chapter 21? You probably remember the story after that miraculous catch of fish and breakfast on the on the shore. And, and then Peter is reinstated to ministry. It's a wonderful passage there in John 21. Um, Jesus has that long chat with Peter. And in the midst of it, 
he lets Peter know how he's going to die. And Peter looks at Jesus and says, essentially, well, what about, what about him? What about John? And Jesus says, what is it to you? You must follow me. Peter, Peter wanted to know more than Jesus was telling him. And Jesus essentially said, you don't need to know that. You just need to follow me. 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us that we don't even fully understand Jesus. In verse 12, uh, the Apostle Paul is, is speaking here and says, We see, but a poor reflection is in a mirror. Then, speaking about when Christ returns, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Even Paul, the Apostle Paul, Paul who who wrote most of the New Testament, even he didn't fully understand everything there was to know about Jesus and about God. It's the same way with us. We will someday fully understand. But for now, God only allows us to see what we need to see. So don't worry. Don't worry when you can't see past the light into the darkness beyond. Trust that God is showing you it is lighting up all that you need to see for now. And then move forward in obedience and faith with what God has given you to see right now. God will reveal the next when you need to see it. That's why it's called living by faith, not by sight. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. We have a ministry here at Calvary called Grief Share. Um, it's one of... It's a, an amazing ministry for those who have lost a loved one. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that those who are grieving face is often they just don't know what to do. They, they're overwhelmed. There's so many things going on. They just don't know what to do. And so we have a saying in Grief Share. We have a saying in Grief Share that says this, just do the next good thing. Just do the next good thing. Don't, don't worry about 10 steps down the road. Don't worry about what's going to happen a year from now or a month from now or even sometimes a day from now. Just do the next good thing. Focus on that. Take it one day, one hour, maybe one minute at a time sometimes. That's how it is with the Christian life. We take it one step at a time. Just like with my flashlight, I, I, you, you trust that the light will move ahead of me as I take those steps. You see, that's the neat thing about a flashlight or about a light in the darkness, is as you move forward, as you, as you step into the light that you can see, the, the extent of the light moves ahead of you and continues to reveal more and more of what is to come and what you need to see. You see, if, if I have my flashlight and I'm standing there and I'm looking around and I don't move, I'll never see more than what I can see at that moment. You have to take those steps into what you can see before the light moves ahead of you, just like God moves ahead of us and opens up and, and reveals those next steps as we can see more and more as we move forward with him. Our light as Christians is the word of God. Remember Psalm 119, verse 105 that we read earlier? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's word. Trust God's word to light your way. And try not to get discouraged when you can't see all that you would like to see. First of all, I mean, there is so much in this book. There is so much, more than most of us could learn in a lifetime. Every time I study a passage, God reveals to me something new, something I've never seen before. And that as the Holy Spirit works through his word, he continually lights my way and he, he will light your way. But he's given us his word. Be content with this. This is enough. It's more than enough than what we need in this life. And trust, trust that God is lighting up exactly what we need to see. 
guiding our steps, guiding our path to help us walk according to his good and perfect will and to help us live by faith in Jesus Christ. Let's pray together this morning. Lord God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that your word is a light to our feet and a light to our path. Lord, thank you that you guide us and you lead us, not always in the way we, we expect, but you are always there for us, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we would move forward in trust, trusting what you allow us to see now and trusting that you will open doors and, and create light in the future to allow us where we go next after we take those steps of faith. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight, Lord, and help us to remember that you show us exactly what we need to see at any given moment in our life. Lord, we love you so very much. We thank you that you are our God and that you will guide us through this life. And I pray that you would increase our faith, Lord, and grow us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday. Enjoy this lovely day. I hope you can join us tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, for our worship services at 9 and 11. They've already been pre-recorded and they're all ready to go. Uh, you can see us on our website or on Facebook or on uh, YouTube. And then, of course, our midday moments, Monday through Saturday, every day at noon. I would love for you to join us again for those as they continue into next week. Blessings, everyone. Have a wonderful day.